What's poppin' T-Subs and T-Squad? Um, and happy Monday to y'all. So, new show alert, child. Um, a lot of y'all was, well, I ain't even finna lie to y'all like that. It won't a lot of y'all. Maybe about two or three was sending me the promos for this new show, um, Grown and Gospel, that comes on WeTV. And um, I decided to go to WeTV because somebody has sent it to me and I went to it on the laptop. And the episode done already came out, but it says it, the season doesn't start until the 16th. So I guess they're just throwing this first episode out to see how the numbers do or whatever the case may be. Or I guess to try to generate some buzz. I saw the promo for it when I was watching WeTV. I saw the little promo for it and I said it seemed like a little cute show then. And I kind of forgot about it. But now I see it's back out. Now, listen, I think the only people that's going to feel away about any of these roasting gags are the Kojic folk. But I'm Baptist, so I don't give a shit. It just is what it is. Uh, listen, I've been telling y'all about these Kojic folk since I started my channel back in 2013. And much like people do me with the AKAs, y'all try to shut me up. We'll see y'all can't now. Because now it's a reality show about y'all and y'all foolishness and y'all churn show exactly why y'all why y'all need to stop a lot of this stuff that y'all got going on around there. Because y'all churn is always the best examples. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to leave it at that. Because it's the first episode and I don't know none of these people. So. Grown and Gospel, Season 1, Episode 1, The Prodigal Daughter Returns. So, Elijah Connor. I don't know who Elijah Connor is the child of and as to why he's so important. Now, they say he's a music artist. He can sing. He gave us some vocals, so he, he definitely can sing. And he does have a song that's out that I actually, like, did go to check out or whatever. So, I'm not going to run him down to the ground like that. So, you know, that's all really cool. I really only know him from that stare down meme because I used you a couple times, Elijah. <laughs> I, I realized that was you when they put when they put that up. I said, oh, that's where I know you from. <laughs> it had nothing to do with your damn music. But it does now because, like I say, I listened to it. I looked it up and it's actually. A, 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 yeah, it's a good song. Um. And anywho, he said he over the church. He just there to get his bag. Well, you know, listen, most of the bishops and stuff like that is up there for the same thing. You know, they up there to get their bag. You understand? Look at Jamal Bryan. He up there to get his bag. You understand what I'm saying with his Magilla Gorilla looking ass? Yeah, I said. You know what I mean? So, and there's plenty of other shining examples of there too. Look at L L Lamar right here. Whatever the hell his name is. Bishop robbery around there. Mm -hmm. Moving on. So we get down to Nikki. Nikki is the daughter of Dorinda Clark Cole. Shout out to Auntie Dorinda. Yes, guy. With my hands up. Y'all remember that song? I'm coming out. Okay, I've messed with Dorinda Clark Cole. I ain't gonna say what I was gonna say. That's Auntie Dorinda. Shout out to her. And shout out to Nikki. Um, Nikki, I'm assuming Nikki could also be considered the prodigal daughter that, you know, the mama didn't shun and get rid of because Nikki opens up about how, you know, she was a godly, earthly woman. You know what I'm saying? And everything that they preached against down there to that church house, she was doing the, the, the complete opposite of what they wanted her to do. And she talked about how normally when that happens, a lot of the times the, the, the parents are just let their churn fall by the wayside and let them go because they're now of the world and not God and so on and so forth. And, you know, she started crying and praising her mama for not doing that, for not, you know, letting her go and, you know, never giving up on her and so on and so forth. And I felt Nikki. And so shout out to Nikki. For real, for real, shout out to Nikki. If I decide to keep this show in the repertoire, I think I'm going to see it for Nikki. I like Nikki a lot. Um, Y'all know I live for Dorinda, so shout out. So Brianne Hammond, she is the daughter of Fred Hammond. Shout out to her. She's moving back to Detroit because she wants to get back into the music industry and all of the jazz and all that good stuff. But 
her and Fred Hammond are not on the best of terms. And because of which, it's going to be a lot harder for her to get into the industry than it would be for somebody else. I think it's really interesting to hear that because, you know, I really don't know much about Fred Hammond other than I like his songs. You know what I'm saying? And I have a lot of his albums. That's really all I know about Fred Hammond. Like, it was interesting to hear her, her mama, and her adopted brother talk about how, you know, they really don't hear from him like that. You know what I'm saying? And Brianne was opening up about how she had to get a job to help her mom around because, you know, they really didn't have money like that and so on and so forth. And it was just like, really? Please don't tell me your daddy a fuck nigga. I don't want to know that about um about Fred Hammond because I live for Fred. I, I don't, I don't want to know that about your daddy. And I ain't calling him that. I'm just saying I hope that ain't what you saying about him. Dear God Almighty, not Fred, child. Anyway, so Nikki getting a call, a FaceTime call or a phone call from her husband, Dion, that's locked up. I think he's been locked up for five years. So not only was you a worldly woman, you sitting over here married to a nigga that's in jail, dear Lord God Almighty. Like, I'm surprised they ain't threwed you out of the church yet. <laughs> I'm surprised they ain't threwed you out of the church yet, Nikki. You know, most times the people don't even give a damn about <laughs> who you related to. I mean, I don't know. That's that's a lie. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> but see, that's why I bang with Nikki, though. You understand me? Because Nick, I, I, I see you just like me, Nikki. I rock with that. Ain't nothing wrong with a little life after life. Listen. And that's another avenue you could go on. Since you're already on WeTV, you may as well do a little merge around there. The life after, love during, love after. You know what I'm saying? Why not? Get your coin, knickknack. Moving on. Elijah going to see Bushman, and he is 97.9, I believe it called, which is an extension of iHeartRadio around there to Detroit. That was where he showcase his new song which was real cute shout out to the song the song was real cute like i said elijah can sing you know what i mean so he not slouch around it so shout out to elijah um yeah that's really all i got for that scene because elijah i'm gonna give you some at the end of this moving on um brianne meeting up with jay brooks shout out to jay brooks jay brooks works with a lot of people in the industry apparently um, and I like him a lot. He seems like a real even kill type of guy, and I can rock with that. And he also gives her great advice about all of these excuses that she's making. I mean, I'm just saying, Brianne, like, how old is you, Brian? Y'all want to know what kills me? People that's damn near 40 about to be there trying to break it into the industry. Like, for real, honestly, and truthfully speaking, Brianne, I think you might work best being like a ghostwriter or something. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what you should do. Maybe you should write for people. You know what I mean? I don't necessarily think you need to be a, a, not trying to squash your dreams, not trying to squander it. I ain't trying to be like Fred, but... I mean, I don't know. I was with Jay Brooks. All of these excuses that you making, child, they like assholes. Everybody got one, but, you know... I, moving on. Um... So Jay Brooks is meeting up with Tasha, Tasha Page, Elijah, and Nikki. And they think they said Tasha Page won Sunday's Best. I don't know. I didn't watch Sunday's Best. You know, that wasn't my, they want my gig. But shout out to you, Tasha Page. Coleman. Um, and they meet down to the Coney Island Diner or whatever. And he's telling them about Brianne wanted to come back to Detroit and wanted to come back into the industry and so on and so forth. I didn't mind him asking his friend group kind of to like put Brienne up under their wing a little bit and kind of help her come up out of her shell and, you know, kind of help her stay a little grounded or whatever the case may be. You know, definitely it's, it's her that got to do the work, but y'all know, I appreciate the intent behind it. But then once we get down to the end of this thing and to see all of the dress shade and all of the strays that Brienne, Brienne, Brienne was catching from not only Tasha but Elijah. It was a lie. It was a lie. Um, we gonna get there in a second. So Nikki taking her mama 
and Auntie Jackie out to f get more clothes because I guess they still doing bookings and shows and gigs with the Clark sisters or whatnot. And she's the manager. Of them. So, you know, I guess they have something big coming up soon. So she takes her and Auntie Jackie out to go find dresses and she's letting them know about Brienne being back home. And Auntie Jackie gave her some great advice, which is she sounds like a little rebel, much like you once was. So just talk to her and, you know, kind of fill her out a little bit, make her feel welcomed or whatever the case may be. Like, don't do what Tasha and Elijah was doing. Don't do that to her. It's basically what Auntie Jackie was saying. Moving on. Um, Nikki's 40th birthday party. Shout out to you, Nikki. Um, Elijah. Listen. Elijah is really handsome. So I don't understand why he has to overcompensate. Like, That glittery American bandstand, glittery ass outfit that you showed up in, like, I never understood that about, about got, ain't, women and men do it. The ones that are real pretty, handsome, beautiful, gorgeous, whatever. And then they just overcompensate and overdo it with all of these overdone, gaudy ass outfits. Like, you sitting over here throwing Brienne all of this shade, but I don't know how the very well hell you could showing up looking like a glittery ninja outfit. Like, that shit was. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, I guess, Elijah. And if I was your date, I wouldn't even want to go. To be honest, like, I wouldn't even want to go. Like, your body was more snatched in that shit than what, than, than what she had on. Like, I... And what was the girl named Jazz? I guess Jazz just wanted to be on TV by any means necessary, because no guy would I have shown up anywhere with you in that. Moving on. Um, Brian shows up down to the party and Elijah and Tasha starts running down on <laughs> running down on her. Listen, I would say this. If I was Brianne, I wouldn't want to be around Tasha or Elijah because it's like y'all say y'all want her to be around and y'all say y'all want to help her, but then y'all reading her and roasting her down to the ground and y'all don't even know her. Tell that y'all, tell her y'all really don't know her like that. Like, y'all know of her, but y'all don't know her know her like that. And it's just like Tasha reading and roasting her down in her outfits, calling it Salvation Army-ish or whatever. And don't get me wrong. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not giving it Salvation Army. Burlington, I give it that. Macy's, I give it that. J.C. Penney's. I give it that, but not Salvation Army, not good with it. And what? And even if it was, what's wrong with that? Y'all know she's going through things right now. Her daddy don't even see it for her. Her mama owe her adopted brother to let them tell it. Then you got Elijah running around here, running shade on her, and again, like. <sighs> Whatever. Elijah come around there touching all in Brianna's hair without her permission, and Brianna should have fucked you up for that. I mean, I'm just saying, Elijah, you don't know that woman. When you sitting over there running your fingers all in her hair without her permission, don't do that. She don't know where your hands been. You probably just came out of the bathroom holding your little ass dick and ain't even washing your hands. Like, you probably was just scratching your nuts or the crack of your ass or something, and you coming over there putting your hands all up through her hair. Like, she should have threw water on your ass. That's what she really should have did. If that was Brianna, I would have did it. Anywho, that said, that's all I got. I ain't got no more to give y'all. The episode was cute. I figured it was going to be cute, but like I said, I forgot all about it. But I'm glad y'all reminded me of it. It was cute. Um, but whether it'll stay up here on the channel or not depends on you guys. Like, comment, share, <laughs> and most importantly, subscribe. If y'all like the show, comment. All right, share, like it, whatever. And depending on how the numbers do, we'll determine if this stays on the channel or not, because y'all know how I am. So yeah, I'll see y'all later. Bye.